Welcome to the School Specialty Art Booth. My name is Mary Riley, and I am here with Nadine Dressbach. We are subject matter experts for SAC School Specialty. Between the two of us, we have over 40 years experience in the art education business. Nadine is a graduate of Kent State University in Ohio with a BA and an MA in art education. And I graduated from Mount Mary University in Milwaukee, Wisconsin with a BA in fine art. We are both passionate and supportive of art education and hope you enjoy the journey we are going to take you on today. For the last 20 years, SAC School Specialty has published a lesson plan book with a collection of plans created by a team of art educators and art professionals. Every year, we try to come up with new ways of incorporating art materials into the art education classroom. We base all our plans on the National Art Education Core Standards. This year, in keeping with the 20-year milestone, we put together a collection of 20 lesson plans, which we will review with you today, highlighting the newest in products, along with some longtime favorites of our art team. So let's get started. Our first slide has four valuable links on it. The first one is our professional development site where you can learn more about our PD offerings, both virtual and in-person. The second link is for our Teachable site that features our on-demand professional development offerings, as well as at-home webinars geared to teaching art remotely with minimal products. You will receive a certificate for both types of webinars upon completion. We also offer these for team meetings with live Q&A upon request. The third link is for our blog site. Nadine and I have had fun creating blogs around some of our most popular lesson plans and taking twists with the materials used as well as applying them to the at-home classroom. The last link is for a product line we have called a workshop in a box. These kits provide the primary materials you will need to complete one of our lesson plans with a group of 10 participants. These kits are great for a staff meeting to have on hand as for a substitute teacher and to use for professional development. Do take the time to visit our website and check out our different offerings to help refresh your creative style. The next slide feature the artwork that we would normally have hung in our booth with the products used to create the work. The images and pages are from our 2020 lesson plan book. Enjoy our presentation. The first lesson entitled From Concrete to Abstract was created by Jack Matthews of Jacksonville, Florida. It uses a self-created viewfinder aid to help students find interesting abstract subject matter in everyday materials, such as magazines and books. Chroma Paint sponsored this lesson and Jack highlighted their Chroma Essentials acrylic paint and their Molten Metals acrylic paint. Both products have excellent coverage and pigmentation. This painting was done on Frederick's cut edge canvas in a 12 inch square to mimic the square of the viewfinder used. Saks nylon easel brushes were the brush of choice for this lesson plan. The moon over New York City was created by Phyllis Annette of Caldwell, New Jersey. This collage aids students in the exploration of mixed media, as well as learning the elements and principles of design. The nighttime setting adds an extra twist in the study of how objects change color and patterns at night. This spread features um, the products that were showcased in this lesson plan, from the Crayola color sticks to Crayola Crayola's new signature line of products. We have highlighted three of the signature lines on this slide. Metallic outline markers, blend and shade colored pencils, and pearlescent cream sticks. All three products add a bit of mystery to a nighttime piece of art. 
The 24 count watercolor set is the same quality Crayola watercolors, just a larger offering. The brush set is one of Crayola's newest sets and features four flat brushes. It also comes in four rounds. Any artist or student would appreciate the quality of these brushes. Finally are the Crayola metallic markers in a set of eight. Joe Collada of Houston, Texas put his origami skills to the test in creating these pearlescent origami boxes featuring the new pearlescent cream sticks from Crayola. These creamy, easy to apply metallic sticks give a luminescent appearance to the designs on the boxes and the black paper makes them explode. The origami box is easy to master. The boxes are made from a nine inch square of bristle board or black art paper. You will find a tutorial online for making these boxes as well as an on-demand webinar. Before being constructed, the paper is embellished with strong design patterns. Upon completion, they can be stacked for admiring or filled with goodies for gift giving. Two simple products go into the production of these artful boxes. As I mentioned before, Crayola pearlescent cream sticks were the medium used. They are a new stick that is part of the Crayola signature line. The stick lays down a dense metallic color and will last a long time. They take time to dry, but once dry are permanent. We found through experimentation that black sulfite construction or art paper works best for making the boxes. You can achieve a crisp tight fold with this paper, making your box sturdy and visually more appealing. Joe's next lesson plan um, is a watercolor technique plan in which he states, it invites a direct and spontaneous response to a subject. Watercolor has the capacity to convey excitement with speed and economy of line. This lesson is designed for a student's first time encounter with watercolor. I believe I'm still at that stage when it comes to watercolor, a medium that I've always struggled with. The Simply watercolors from De La Rowney are a new tubed watercolor to use for one's first adventures into watercolor painting. The De La Rowney Simply brand of watercolors are the star in this lesson, a new line introduced this year. They come in sets of six to 24, along with a class pack of 14, 144 tubes. Tubes are 0.4 ounces. The 90 pound Saks watercolor paper is a good weight for the beginning watercolorist. And the Saks golden Taclon brushes allow for control your first time out. I'm going to turn the presentation over to Nadine, who will cover the next round of lesson plans, including many that she did herself. Thank you, Mary. Hello, everyone. I hope you are enjoying a sneak peek at some of these fun works of art. And I have another fun one here for you. This lesson plan is created by Eric Orr of Dallas, Texas, where he has used clay slabs and various texture elements to create a lesson plan called Pastel Slab Fun Houses, featuring Amico ceramic glazes. These creative little houses use variations of size, texture, and color to build emphasis in their unique designs. Here are some of the materials that he used. The fun textures come from the Amico texture rollers that you see on the right. And the tile cutter to cut the slabs is on the left bottom corner. Then we have the Amico glazes, teacher's palette light on top, and the velvet underglazes on the bottom. This next lesson is called Marginal Art. The artwork and lesson plan was created by Franz Spoon from Canton, Michigan. Now, this lesson plan was sponsored by Crescent Mapboards, and Franz wanted to do something a little different. 
While the traditional function of a mat is to provide the viewer a piece of artwork surrounded by a neutral space, for this project, he used the borders of the mat as a platform for annotation, an opportunity to provide additional visual reference to the very work itself. Some of the materials Franz used are the Crescent number 33 smooth white mat board, as well as Crescent mat board assortment, the Logan 350 mat cutter, and the Westcott safety blade box cutter. Our next lesson, lesson is actually one of mine. It's a clay metallic weaving. This lesson was sponsored by DOS. I used DOS Junior Air Dry Hardening Clay. Uh, texture plates and metallic paints to create a woven piece. This lesson allows students to strengthen their hand building skills and focus on creating complementary contrast color and texture. Creating the consistent length, width, and depth of the woven strips brings in math elements and hand skills. I used various texture plates, but the particular piece that's pictured here I used kind of a leaf pattern and a tree bark pattern to create those elements as well as the green and the brown clay. The clay has kind of a rubbery feel, so as I was creating the strips, I would store them in a plastic bag to keep them moist and pliable enough to weave when I was finished with all the strips. Here are some of the products you might have seen in the booth at the show. We have the DOS Junior Clay at the top and the creative tools that I used, as well as some of the rubber and plates. The top ones are from Jack Richardson and the bottom set is from Royal Co. Lastly, on the bottom left, we have the Prang Metallic Temper Paint that I gently rubbed on top of the clay to give it that metallic sheen. Next up from our lesson plan book and collection of artwork, we have My Monster Above the Bed. This is also one of the lesson plans that I created. This lesson uses Elmer's glow in the dark glue. Students create their own personal monster to display in their room and protect them. They can write a story about their monster and interesting facts that they invent to tell its story. This is a little in progress that shows the monster is actually creating on a piece of plastic like acetate. And the pattern can be put underneath the plastic for the students to trace and fill in the monster. When the monster is dry, it just pops right off the acetate. It can then be mounted on a finished board and that board can be decorated. And the story about the monster can be displayed along with it or on the back. A few simple materials were used to create this monster, including the Elmer's glow in the dark glue and Sharpie metallic and traditional markers. Our next work of art and lesson plan comes from Phyllis Annette of Caldwell, New Jersey. This beautiful landscape is created on a new metallic canvas from Fredericks, and the lesson is titled Metallic Canvas Paintings. These canvases provide a shimmering metallic colored ground that will be used with water mixable transparent oil colors to create a luminous effect for painting. In this lesson plan, students will also learn the painting technique of glazing with oil paints to show off the gold colored ground. The primary materials used in this lesson plan were the Windsor Newton Artisan Water Mixable Oil Colors, the Fredericks Gold Metallic Canvas in a 9 by 12 size, Saks Golden Taclon Brushes, Sea Sponges, as well as a few other materials not pictured here. Our next lesson entitled My Fortress of Strength is one of our adapted art lesson plans created by Sue Lysel from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. This lesson was sponsored by General's Pencil Company. In this lesson, students will draw a fortress of strength, emphasizing various textures, such as stone, brick, wood, and metal. Students with fine motor challenges 
may find it difficult to grasp traditional drawing and painting tools. This plan provides adaptations for students with physical challenges to independently use art tools, creating their personal fortress of strength. This slide shows our lesson plan layout for the various generals pencils and includes the rest of the directions and the materials list for the lesson. Here we have a close up shot at some of the packaging for the materials used. We see general semi hex pencils, which shape lends itself to an easier grip and they won't roll off the table. And um, also general's layout pencils, watercolor pencils, and colored pencils, as well as a Factus tri-tip eraser. Some other key materials used here were the Abilitations Egos, pencil grip mounted grip sets, PETA mini easy grip scissors, Royal Aquaflow brushes, they hold water in the handle of them, so dipping is not required, as well as the Westcott finger grip ruler. Here we have another piece by ceramic artist and educator Eric Orr from Dallas, Texas. These are the elemental textured plates created using Mako products. Plaster slump and hump molds are an easy way to create functional wear. This lesson uses plaster molds that fit together. Mako designer texture mats allow the students to texture both sides of a slab of clay at one time. Some of the main products used in this lesson plan are all from Mako and include the slump and hump molds, design press tools, texture mats, elements, glazes, and lastly, designer liners. This next fun lesson plan comes to us from artist Annette Johnson from Waukesha, Wisconsin. It, <clears throat> it is a geometric pop-up created using true ray papers. This lesson uses construction paper to turn a flat two-dimensional sheet of paper into a three-dimensional structure by folding, cutting, gluing, and inserting the pop-up structure into an accordion folded strip. In addition, they will explore the artwork of famous paper engineers and pop-up artists, such as Robert Sabuda and Matthew Reinhardt. This lovely slide is just one of the inserts from the lesson plan book, and it shows you the continued directions in our full materials list. And here I've pulled just a few of the key items out to highlight for you. As I mentioned, we are using the True Ray construction paper, um, as well as Alvin uh, cutting mats, a bone folder, Westcott see-through acrylic rulers, and the Alvin carbon blade cutter. And this is one of my lessons called Elements and Principles Under the Sea. And it was sponsored by Creativity Street. In this lesson, um, students use a wide variety of fun two and three dimensional materials to create, to create an underwater environment by focusing strongly on elements and principles of design. So a combination of materials elements in this piece allows students to create artwork with a strong sense of movement, pattern, texture, space, contrast, as well as other elements and principles. The key part of this lesson in creating all of those things is to not glue items down until everything is laid out. Let the students spend a lot of time and experiment with the layout and with those wood pieces and the colors and the directions of the elements in the piece before anything gets permanently glued to the surface. This slide is a layout from the lesson plan book that shows some of the key materials that are used. The woodsies, those are the little small geometric shaped wood pieces in colors of natural wood. I painted the natural ones with Saks metallic acrylic paint. I also used those glitter glue, which is a large chip glue, um, chips of glitter, I mean, which made a very nice strong background in the back um, on that black crescent ultra, um, ultra board uh, mounting surface. I really enjoyed the creativity spiral stems, and I used the peel and stick gemstones 
to accent the fish. Not the flowers pictured here, but I used the circles that come in the same pack. The Creativity Street acrylic stones were also great accent pieces, but make sure to attach those with a thick designer tacky glue. And here we have one more of my lessons entitled Multimedia Habitat, it's sponsored by Royal Co. This lesson uses a variety of tactile materials to create a textured multimedia animal, animal habitat. The paper mesh used in this project would be painted, drawn, sewn on, and cut to specific shapes. This lesson also uses diffusing paper, which highlights the use of liquid watercolors. Nature stencils can be used on the mesh and or on the diffusing paper to create the desired habitat. This lesson is also featured as a teachable webinar available on the website that Mary talked about in the beginning of our presentation. This slide highlights the main products that were used for the lesson plan. This includes that paper mesh at the top I just talked about, the nature stencils and the diffusing paper. And then we have the Saks liquid watercolors, embroidery floss and plastic lacing needles. This lovely artwork and lesson plan is another piece from Phyllis and Nat. It is called Reprose Illustration and it is sponsored by Sharpie. Before the invention of photography, botanical illustrations was the only way to visually record the world's many species of plant life. Your students will observe the work of other botanical illustrators in order to study the art of line drawing and its clarity. Students will draw a live plant and transfer the drawing to a black coated aluminum foil, applying the repose process on the foil. They will then color the work with the Sharpie permanent metallic markers. The black foil that is used is called Art Emboss and it's up at the top there in another form. And here we have some images of the new metallic Sharpie markers. So now I'm going to turn it back over to Mary. Thanks, Nadine. In the lesson, Additions to Additions, Ron Spoon, Canton, Michigan, teaches us how to use um, a repetitive image and how it can create rhythm and movement in a single composition. Images are screen printed on a t-shirt or fabric piece in a repetitive pattern to complete this lesson. Fabric screen printing ink gives the artist intense colors to experiment with in this screen printing lesson. Speedball printmaking products are the star of this lesson, from their fabric stretched wood screens to their fabric screen printing inks and squeegees, both created specifically for use on fabric. The hot pink acrylic screen printing ink is used to add a pop of color. Both inks clean up easily with soap and water and are permanent when properly heat set. Annette Johnson of Waukesha, Wisconsin shows us how math and art work hand in hand in her lesson, Graphic Patterns. Patterns are a fundamental concept in both art and mathematics. Math plays a role in determining proportion, symmetry, and shape of patterns. In this lesson, students will create graphic patterns with a ruler, pencil, and cross-section paper. The final patterns will be enhanced with Stadler colored and watercolored pencils. Stadler Ergo Soft colored pencils and watercolored pencils are the tools of choice in this lesson plan. They come in 12 and 24 color sets as well as class packs. The Ergo Dynamic Design makes them easy and comfortable to use for all age groups. Our cross section or graph papers give the designer a format to use to create their design on. A non-traditional approach to plein air painting is demonstrated in the Water Mixable Oil Plein Air Painting Lesson Plan created by Joe Collada of Houston, Texas. Joe uses oil paint for his plein air painting. 
The twist is it's water mixable, so it's easy to use in the field. Paint, brushes, and a bottle of water, and you are ready to take on any landscape. The Windsor Newton Artisan Water Mixable Oils turn a tedious plein air excursion into a very easy adventure. These oil paints have the same characteristics of regular oil paint without the bother of solvents for cleanup. No odors or chemicals to deal with. These paints come in sets of six or 12 colors. Sax canvas panels and Sax Olympia white bristle brushes and the aid the painter as well. In this next slide, I take you into the world of acrylic painting with my lesson, Acrylic Sampler. Acrylic paints can be used so many ways and with so many different mediums and products producing exciting and endless techniques. Students can explore these techniques in this sampler created on Frederick's natural cotton canvas using a self-made viewfinder. The new Saks True Flow Premium Acrylic Paint was my choice for this project. It is a heavy bodied acrylic with good viscosity and pigmentation. It stood up to all the experiments I put it through. I used a clear gesso natural canvas for my base, easy to cut, and it allows the paint to shine no matter what techniques or mixed medium I used. The viewfinder helped me select the most unique parts of the techniques I experimented with to create the sampler. Here are the products used for this lesson. The star product is the Saks True Flow Premium Acrylic Paint. We introduced this heavy bodied paint in 2020. It comes in sets of 12, 18, and 24 in 0.34 ounce, 0.75 ounce, and a 2.5 ounce sizes. I love our Saks Optimum Golden Taclon brushes. They are flexible, yet they hold up to the weight of acrylic paint. The Saks Multimedia Varnish, Acrylic Platinum Medium, and Acrylic Glitter Medium add extra gloss and pizzazz to your painting. We have numerous other Saks acrylic mediums to choose from. In our last featured lesson, Eric Orr of Dallas, Texas, takes nature relief tiles and uses decorative and functional tiles created through history as his cue for these plans, especially Roman and mid done in Rome and Middle Eastern cultures. These lessons focus on using elements of nature to create and enhance relief tiles. Sachs low fire white clay was used to construct these decorative tiles. The tiles were glazed with Sachs True Flow gloss glaze and Sachs True Flow underglaze. Both glazes come in class packs or individual bottles. The examples of tiles featured in this lesson show the range of colors available in these quality glazes. We hope you enjoyed this journey through our 2020 lesson plan book. If you would like a copy of this book, you can email us at saxarts at schoolspecialty.com. We also have a digital flip book and the link is provided here and we thought you'd like our contact information. And so both of our email addresses are on this slide. Nadine and I would like to thank you for participating in this virtual tour of the latest and greatest in products and ideas from SAC School Specialty. We miss not seeing you in person. It's so vital to our success to know what you are focusing on in your art rooms and what products you are looking for. Please feel free to contact either of us with questions, ideas, or just to say hello. Have a successful year and keep creating.